Okay, cool. All right, so I'll just give you guys a little bit of a flavour, and it's just really um, some stuff I've got coming up soon. So first of all, just to unpack what is the market leadership program, well, right now what, what we're on is a call for the market leaders network, which is you guys, um, and the market leadership program is um, aimed at helping companies become the leader in their market segment. So you want to be... Um, the most successful companies um, have a strong position in their segment. Okay, so so in, on my LinkedIn profile, I've got um, that I help companies fall, who have fallen behind a saturated marketplace increase their profits and regain their market leadership. And so the real question is, well, why market leadership and why the market leaders um, market leadership program, right? And um, because you want to um, own a um, market leadership position, right? So the companies, and, and I've worked with companies that when I started working with them, they didn't own their market. They didn't have a market leadership position, but they wanted to be the number one player in a certain segment or in a certain market. And over time, by um, implementing projects consistently, they were able, with the competitive-oriented strategy, they were able to um, outpace their competition and become the market leader, right? So they, they got into a stronger position, stronger, more working capital, um, you know, just a, a, bit, a better business, better internal synergies. And then when the market changed or whatever, they've, they've had an opportunity to come fall their way and, and quite quickly got three, three horse lengths ahead of their competition and became the market leader. Um, and got several examples of that. Um, so, so first of all, you want to have a market leadership position. So that's why. Um, and the second thing is when people start off, they generally, like Murray correctly pointed out earlier, start, start off as self-employed, but they're trying to get across to the um, business owner part of the cash flow quadrant where all the freedom is, uh, business owner and investor is on the right-hand side of the cash flow quadrant. So they start off self-employed, um, which is basically in your business. Then they end up on the business, and, and then eventually you want to get out of the business so that's the investor investor quadrant. So in, on, out. Fair enough. I've shared this with you guys lots of times, right? But the issue is that um, the, the problem is different at each stage. Okay? So the problem here is getting out of the sales firing line and getting automation happening, or some, some automation, some systemization. The problem is a business owner. So there's three ceilings to complexity. So companies I typically work with are either, um, say, let's call it a typical 15 full, full-time employees, or they might have seven full-time employees, or they might have 30. And the problem's different at each, at each spot. Fair enough? And so there's a ceiling of complexity. So self-employed to business owner, business owner to investor. So what I do is I help companies ascend these different stages to get to the next stage and change gears and work through these stages so that they can ultimately own their market um, and you know get themselves into a position where they could exit potentially or turn their business into an investment. So having, having gone through that complete process and right out to 150, um, you're totally... And, and, you know, you're always learning along the way to do things better and you're always learning off people of the expertise around you. And, and what I've done is I've sort of done that whole process, you know, whether I've done, I've done mistakes along the way and I've done lots of success along the way and it's been really exciting and I guess the knowledge is in my head. But having left a big business as a CEO or bigger business, I should say, it's not that big, it was 135 staff when I left and coming back into to the trenches, uh, it's almost like a relearning, and and every step of that way you've just mentioned requires a little different tweak to your system, a little bit of a management tweak, a little a little bit a little bit um, of a difference. So you're quite right. It's it's exciting. As you grow, you get different pains, and you have to deal with them in different ways, <laughs> and they're always slightly different. So I, I think that's a great um, analogy. Um, okay. So the first time you did it, so the second time it's a lot easier in a sense because you've got a roadmap, right? 
Well, I think from my point of view, I guess I've got a very good understanding of what you've you've you've, you've mentioned there, and and I, you know, the second time I'm doing it, I'm learning new things all the time. And you know, as I said before with Mark, that's a brand strategy. I've never gone through brand strategy before. Very exciting, great value. I I, I can't believe we didn't do it previously. So it's learning these little tricks and going, hey, you know, I can see where that will take us, and I can see the, I guess, the overall value of the company. Um, growing from what we did with the brand strategy awareness. Not only when it comes to new staff and customers and clients coming into the business, because they see the professionalism, they see the light bit of fun, they see the organization, they see they see crystal clear branding. And, and it just um, influences. The foundation of this business that I'm in now is about upscaling fast using yeah. experts within their fields to out and you're on a you're on a pretty pretty fast trajectory eh? like you've you've had a pretty wow. good year last year your first year you, you made yeah. a profit in your first year wasn't a big number but it was yeah. good. you're still 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 profit right um yeah, still, still self-funded profit, yeah. It's, yeah, yep. yeah it's about growth and this is about a, a bit of a global market for us so so to have all these little steps in play as quickly as possible but also doing it as 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 close to right as, as we can, um, yep. just helps us to scale up when opportunities come about and which they are. So, you know, we we um, we can actually deliver on really large scale projects and be quite small and nimble because of the systems that you have helped me put into play because of this new, you know, new website build we're about to launch. It's going to give us another building block platform of goodness. So, yeah. Cool, man. Okay, great. Um, so um, just before we wrap up, guys, um, so I'm starting the, um, the, the sales machine, which is all about building your sales machine into your business. And I work with companies, long, my, my one-to-one engagements, we do it anyway. Um, and we are doing it anyway, guys. Um, and I'm, but I'm also inviting companies to um, to get on a weekly um, group group call to uh, to implement a sales machine into their business. So the idea is to semi-automate, at least semi-automate. Um, the biggest stumbling block for most business, which is um, getting the sale, the owner out of the sales and. Um, and getting reliable so sales process um getting but getting consistent um in, inbound inquiries um consistency and um and and being able to convert them uh into um you know a, a or b a or b clients interested in what you have and being able to convert them into um valuable clients that you can serve 